Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a new video by popular, popular, popular request and demand. Larry Stroman. You guys have been asking for this forever. Lots of different people too. It's not just one person. Um, so anyway, uh, this is X Factor. These issues are great. Um, you know, these d d digital reproductions of them look good, but they definitely look better on the original newsprint. Most of these issues are very, very affordable. Um, you could probably get them even in a lot. I would recommend them. I just think that they look killer on the newsprint. But anyway, um, it's quick housekeeping, as they say in YouTube land. Um, uh, you can definitely check out my Patreon for more um, technique-driven videos. I, I tend to keep that stuff over there. There's, uh, I think, upwards of 450 videos up there from penciling, perspective, inking, digital inking. I've been uploading stuff on. I mean, there's so much stuff. And there's other book reviews and stuff like that. But it tends to. There's a, there's a series that I did on perspective. There's lighting. Um, and we can really touch on anything. I mean, recommendations are always welcome. So check that out. There's a $1 tier if you just want to get in and you get full access. Uh, there's tip jars. And then there's a review where I do a review of your work for uh, 15 to 20 minutes. It's 20 bucks. And then a full hour lesson where I actually will not only give your work a review, but I'll actually give you a lesson with like stuff to work on. Um, I'll do overlays on your stuff and kind of show you where you could like improve things like storytelling or structure. So there's a lot of options depending on what you want to do. But it's been like that forever. But I, just figured I, I rarely plug Patreon that heavily, so I might as well. Um, and then, um, yeah, let's do this. So uh, when I was thinking about doing the Stroman video, let's get into Carlos mode. <laughs> um, the two... The two uh, influences that I see uh, in his work are Kevin Nolan and Bill Sienkiewicz. I'm not saying that they are influences, but you'll kind of see what I mean if you're familiar with Nolan or uh, Sienkiewicz's work. But but Stroman is definitely his own man. He has a very, very unique style. This looks like someone else's inks on him. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second. I was I was kind of tripping on some of these uh, pages, but we'll move through this stuff quick. But this is probably late, late 80s, early 90s, if I was going to guess, um, Marvel stuff. You can see that the layouts are Strowman, but this doesn't look like his inks. We'll hustle through. There's a lot of pages to go through, so we'll kind of we'll muscle through these first ones fast. But I'm nearly sure this is a Strowman issue, at least breakdowns by him. Um, all right, so let's keep moving. Don't worry, we'll get to the good stuff. This is so 90s. <laughs> it's cool, though, you know. I mean, it's all the stuff that people wanted to see. But anyway, you'll see. Larry, when, when he inks his own stuff, or, or whoever was the main inker on him, um, this stuff, this is definitely Stroman. There may have been some film pages. His run started to get a little bit um, fractured. Um, but, uh, yeah, when Stroman stuff is generally quite clean, and there's not a lot of rendering on it. But... It's very designy. His shapes that he uses for the characters are really, really interesting. And he can draw his ass off. Um, this is all really, really good. I'm going to see a little tiny bit of Michael Golden in those little figures. But, you know, again, that's me projecting just what I'm familiar with. This is cool. But, yeah, uh, you know, in a, in a way, I, I sometimes will say that some artists are harder to learn from than others. I actually think that Strowman would be if you're a fan of his stuff is a decent artist to study like in a good in a good way like i think that there's things that are grounded in consistency you can see a little mignola here um who didn't like mignola though i mean his, his stuff is so cool and it was it's his way that he reduced detail but still made stuff look awesome is hard not to appreciate as an artist trying to do a job <laughs> Is we do have deadlines. Oh, and people were, it was funny, people were commenting on, like, how many videos I was posting. You guys do realize that I work this hard all the time, just not on YouTube. But, I mean, from the moment I get up until I go to bed, I'm always doing something productive. It's just how I'm wired. So, uh, yeah, it's just I'm focused on YouTube now for you all. But, yeah, this is nothing new. This is just, I mean, I've been like this for ever. I don't sit still. I don't really waste time on stuff. Um, and uh, that's why I'm super productive and trying to always like learn and grow. That's what it's about for me. Not all the fucking static in the air. It's a fucking time vacuum. This is cool. 
Okay, so let's do this. Yeah, see, this is like classic Strowman looking stuff. Look at that. That's so nice. So, um, yeah, like, like, uh, I love when people do faces like this, like these down shots where it's just so simple, but so good. His hair is very cool. I always like the way that he did the hair. Some ink drops there. What happened? They can clean that up. I was trying to keep my, my gutters clean. If there's lines overthrown, I'll generally clean them up. That could just be some film stuff. This is nice. Yeah, this guy is so awesome. I believe he's on Facebook. I don't know that for a fact. But I got the impression that he might have some sort of a presence online. I don't know if he's on Instagram, though. Honestly, this is cool. <clears throat> My friend Travel Foreman kind of has a style similar to this. It doesn't look like Strowman exactly, but Travel's like a real storyteller. And, um... He's kind of like an artist's artist, but in some ways, I. But you know, I get the impression that Strowman is quite a fan favorite too. So many people were requesting him; it was really like, it was very apparent that people wanted to see the work. So, and we can always come back and do uh, if there's something else you want to recommend. I mean, obviously, I know about Tribe. Speaking of Tribe, <laughs> um, but uh, oh man, that's awesome. Yeah, his use of black is great. Like he really, really goes in and does these like killer, killer like huge black areas but it's super strong this is very classic Strowman too man that guy was so talented is so talented I don't know if he still draws comics like on a regular basis some of the image guys is really really interesting you know they they there was this moment in time where everything exploded and became like hyper hyper hot um and uh, yeah, a lot of them didn't really continue working a lot after that. Some, I think, almost, you know, it's just hard to say, but yeah, I don't know what someone like him has done for the last 20 years. I'm sure he's working and doing something with art, but that's cool. Yeah, it was funny. I opened up one issue and it was Joe Casada, Joe Matarera, and someone else. It was like, I was like, oh man, that was tempting to throw in. Um, this is a nice panel. Look at that. That's crazy. Uh, it's a really, really nice panel. This is classic Marvel. Uh, like, it reminds me, it could be like a Mark Silvestri panel was the guys that were doing monthly work and and the it, the image comics level of detail hadn't completely consumed everyone yet and so you would have more pages that were like this they were more sparse but but generally pretty well done laid out and stuff like that but yeah cut to about two or three years after this it was like if you didn't like render the shit out of everything it was like you weren't in the game <laughs> You're not in the game. That's cool. Oh, that's a nice page. Man, that is really cool. Her face. These are nice. This is cool. Oh, <laughs> kid. This is a scary looking little kid. A lot of a lot of comic book artists, they draw very frightening children. I've I've said that in other videos. You guys have seen that if you've been with the channel for a while. There was one in particular. I can't remember what video it was. It was a while ago, maybe a year or two ago. Who was it? Oh, now I'm going to want to know who it was. Oh, what was it? It was so funny. People in the comment section were cracking up. It was a creepy baby. <laughs> Anyone play Silent Hill? Like, back when it came out? Oh, my God. Speaking of creepy kids, holy shit. That game was so terrifying. <laughs> so fun though sometimes I'll throw like people have walkthroughs on YouTube and I'll throw it up and it like, didn't age that well I think if you play it it's way more scary but like it, it got to the point where I would only play it during the day because it was too freaky to play at night <laughs> oh man those are great it's really cool how he's approaching the anatomy look at that arm right there man that is so cool this is a great pose 
It's tricky. Tricky pose. This is nice too. These are cool. Oh man, that's nice. I love that character. It's Strife, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's cool. Down, 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 down. What in the world is that? <laughs> High five. Borat stole that from this comic. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love this panel page. I remember this. This is great. It's really, it's a funny archetype for a hero. Like, he looks, he looks like, uh, like Bernie Wrightson, kind of with cartoon characters like that. It was funny when we were going through the um, the art original art galleries. When I watched it back, I was like, "Oh man, I missed Jack Davis and something else on another uh, or more Drucker." I think I was like, "Damn, I, I I didn't notice the names of some of the people." But anyone could go back and check out the art. This is very classic Strowman. Um, this is pretty cool lettering. I actually like this. I don't like the coloring on it, but I like that. It look like stair steps. Like we're looking down on them. Good lettering is important. I mentioned, oh, you know, and I'll give you guys Blaster Kid updates too. So this weekend, I'm actually going to be able to work on Blaster Kid all weekend, which is a very, very rare treat. But the the penciler that I'm working with on Iron Maiden um, is doing layouts right now. So I have a few days. The Iron Maiden gig is so great. It's like we work at such a steady pace. This guy is like clockwork, turning around pages. Every day I get a page. On the weekends, he'll lay out his pages for the week. It's just beautiful. <laughs> I really, like you you don't know if you've ever worked with uh, people that don't produce that way how frustrating it is but anyway but yeah so and you can plan around them too if I wasn't doing these YouTube videos I would be working on this stuff in the morning and afternoon a bit more but um, this is fine I mean I think this is important to do for, for a multitude of reasons but I think people will really enjoy these this is great man this is such a great panel but yeah, yeah, yeah. So all as soon as this thing, this whole COVID nineteen thing settles down a little bit, I'll definitely start having at least one day a week devoted to Blaster Kid on the YouTube channel, and it'll ramp up as I get um, more, more um, closer to like launching some sort of a campaign on it. But it'll probably be. I mean, I don't see myself launching a campaign until probably August or September. Honestly, it's got to be a ways off just because um, for a bunch of reasons. I mean, I really. Um, will do it though so it'll be fun this is great these hands are awesome this is a really cool figure too she looks cooler here I didn't like the other drawing the uh, for whatever reason it was kind of the way that it was colored this is awesome though so simple but man those are chunky cool shapes yeah that's nice this is great too he's really good at turning the head at different angles it's not an easy shot to pull off she's funny that's cool too. It's like Blood Wolf. <laughs> oh man. See, like, I love that he's got the, the balls to do stuff like this. Because that looks so weird. But it's actually kind of cool because it is so weird. Like, how many people do you know that would draw someone with a crazy head like that? Not many. Man, that's awesome. Look at that. That is really cool. This is a great, great shot, too. <laughs> That's solid, man. That's fun. This is great little little figure right here. I can't even draw our feet. It works. Look at the tiny foot. It's so far back, it's minuscule. That's cool, too. Mignola thinks that, that he sort of started that not in like a negative way like like he wasn't like i did it first but uh he was saying that, that he kind of thinks that he sort of was one of the people that sort of really got that going for artists i you know i saw it with uh, jim lee Silvestri, like everybody had used it but uh yeah i saw an interview with him and he was talking about a lot of stuff it wasn't like the crux of the whole interview was the, the little foot but he mentioned that and i was like hmm, that's interesting because you kind of know honestly like i'm sure it had been done before somewhere but it's like Eddie Van Halen with finger tapping. It's like there, there's a time when it didn't exist in any sort of normal capacity. 
and then you do something and you start to see the ripple effect of it with the stuff that Travis and I did I could totally tell when people were like had the comics out and were referencing stuff that we did it was so obvious to me but you know a lot of them did never accredited us <laughs> But it's like, if you've done the work, you know that it wasn't there before. It didn't exist in that form. And then, uh, you know, when you start to see it trickle down, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, Jim Lee and Scott always said, like, I don't even know how they could handle how many clones there were of their stuff. That would have been so weird to be that popular that, you know, I don't even know, 30 to 50% of the people were sort of doing stuff that you did. And it's not to say that they were formed in a bubble, you know. But, uh, I mean, definitely there isms. And Wills, too. you got to give credit to Wills. And, in fact, it was funny. One of my ideas for tonight was to do Wills' X Factor stuff. Because, to me, honestly, I think Wills, the, the, his X Factor work is excellent. It's really, really good. He draws beautiful women. Uh, just the level of detail and stuff that he was doing on it, it's really, really good. So I'm sure Wills was very, very influential, too. Well, in fact, I know he was. Um, but... Uh, this is cool. Very Stroman. <laughs> ah, it's a nice page. But yeah, it's really interesting, um, you know, how that happens. But yeah, whenever I would feel a little sort of like, man, these dudes are ripping us off. I would just think of Jim and Scott and go, dude, you don't even know the half of it. <laughs> That's really cool. That's cool, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. I like that a lot. I almost, it was funny, so the, the idea of this morning, well, oh, last night I was thinking of what I was going to do, since I'm I'm aware that I'm doing two videos today, I was going to do Jack Kirby and then John Buscema, or vice versa, I wasn't sure which way to go, but uh, I wanted to do some research and kind of try to pull up what I consider and what uh, sort of is universal, universally held as their, their greatest works, so I've got the big um, artist edition of Kirby, I might have two. I didn't get the Silver Surfer one. <clears throat> it was tempting, but I have the Marvel Essential of it, and and uh, this is really great. So, um, but I think tonight I'm gonna do oh, shit. Oh, should I spoil it? I'm, I think I'm gonna do Aphrodite Nine from Finch. Farben mentioned it, but I had it on deck. I already had it in a folder with like six things that, uh, sort of the extension of all the top cow work that we were looking at. To me, Aphrodite 9 was Finch really actually trying hard to, to do something sort of new for himself. Uh, it's got Monera in it and Mobius and Travis. It's a real nice blend of new styles for him. His Moon Knight stuff is great too, though, actually. This is great. <laughs> it's like people don't really draw figures like this that much in comics either. This is cool. That is really, really cool. That's nice too. Good stuff. Uh, 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 nice hand. Solid. One, two, three, four. It's funny. I don't know what that little line in the middle of his finger is with the dot. It just caught my eye because I was like, is it two fingers? <clears throat> oh, that's cool. It was funny. So last night, a huge storm rolled over my house. It was gigantic. We got thunder and lightning and this barrage of hail. It was insane. It was really cool. The first strike of thunder and lightning, I honestly thought someone had thrown a car down my driveway. It like, woke me up, and I literally... <laughs> I was like, did someone's car explode? What the fuck was that? This is really cool. I love how these guys can draw suits, like like the the suggested suits. A good um, book for for like this old school sort of, or hey, I think business suits in general is um. You can look at the um. It's Jack Ham drawing the head and figure. He deals with um sort of this style of clothing. I guess you don't really see it that much in comics now. No, it depends on, I guess, the book itself. And you can always just pull up, like, real reference. What I recommend is, honestly, if you're going to have to draw someone in a certain type of jacket and you can get something similar, just go ahead and buy it and then videotape yourself. No one ever really recommends this. I think videotaping yourself 
moving in it and twisting your arms and having your arm down and then flex it up and doing stuff like that will let you see how the folds are created because that's really what you need to understand looking at a fold when it's already folded is nice but it's really at that point you're just trying to memorize these abstract shapes if you can understand where things crush and where they overlap and where they do all the things that they do there's like six seven things that you kind of need to be aware of it'll really help you um and it'll help you more than just finding a photograph and trying to copy the sort of swirly whirls around the um folds that's my two cents on it have i done that no <laughs> what do i say do as I say, not as I do. But if I if I had something like that, I would actually do it now. I can't give that advice out. These are two killer shots. Holy shit. This one gets a little flattened out, but man, that is awesome. And that is really, really cool. This is nice. <laughs> He's crazy. This is a cool character. God dang, look how thick the arms are and the hands. Big. You see, these aren't really folds. He's got enough of the stuff in the right spot where it looks okay, though. But yeah, it should kind of do this up in here a little bit more. This is cool. <clears throat> well, I hope that this satisfies all the Strowman fans out there. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's like, close your eyes. Just kidding, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> just kidding. Here, take my hand. And then he would just keep doing it. He'd keep, he'd keep shocking him, but then apologizing and saying, no, no, this time I'll do, I'll be nice. Oh. This is cool. These are very, very classic sort of 80s, 90s shots with these these down shots with the small figures. They used them a lot and they used them well. This is actually quite loose too. In black and white, these figures would be very, I mean, it could be the reproduction a little tiny bit, but look at how broken the lines are. Look at this. Isn't that wild? I mean, if you saw it, well, here, let's do it. This should work to some extent. Yeah, I mean, you can get the idea. Like, look how loose that is. That's pretty wild. But it's a nicely designed page. He's got this great strong shape that takes you right here and really lets you focus on these. He's got this great circle shape, which lets you know, look over here, and then this. And then he's got this sort of very abstract -y. you know, I remember I say I pull out when I'm analyzing a page that's the first thing I want to see is how does this thing read as an abstract and it reads really well he's got all these shapes that pull you right through and then where do we go up if you've watched any of my storytelling videos I talk about this all the time you have to move a person through the page he's got a loop he's got this it loops around and goes like that And even navigates through all those word balloons, which probably weren't there, like on the original, um, you know, when he was working on it. But, I mean, let's do this one, too, just for the fun of it. We'll get a little a little learn on. But, yeah, I mean, that's why these guys are so damn good. Um, you know? He's got this really strong shape that pulls you like this, but he's bringing you back around this way. So it sweeps, it sweeps. He's almost got an X, but then this this um, lighting, fiction, I call it fictional lighting. I use it all the time. When I did my heavy metal story from Megadeth, I did the same exact thing. I would light stuff in ways where there would be these shapes that would pull you through, because he's trying to point you to these two characters, but then he wants to move you this way. So this just becomes a hum in the background. These lines, because they're all equally spaced and equally kind of the th same thickness, there's a little bit of taper, but that that's just um a hum you know it's just a warmth to it but 
this is what moves you through, but he wants to make sure that you look here. And even this, he, he uses all the objects at his disposal to make sure that you're focused on what you need to be focused on. You know, this is just an effect to make you go back this way and look at this. And then he uses this to pull you over here and he uses this to pull you out and over here. Cause where is he sending you? He's sending you to the next page over here. This is cool. And that's, that's part of the layout process. I mean, you're trying to tell a clear story, but the way that you position things and sort of the puzzle, puzzle crafting and part of it is that and a good letterer will hopefully help move that along as well if you have a very um wordy writer um you know like if it, if this is peter david so it looks he's got a decent amount of dialogue on these pages i mean th that's a lot of word balloons for this hopefully he does full scripts where you would be aware of it it kind of looks to me like he is because if you drew a bunch of like stuff here, that would be a bummer to have it all covered up by word balloons. This is a great page, by the way. This is nice too. This guy is, he's always squatting. There he's standing. <laughs> this is cool. This is very Wills. That's a Wills shot. Mr. Potassio. Wow. This guy's cool. This is nice too. Uh, 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 uh. Big hands. So. Hmm. I'm just checking out something really quick. Oh man, that's cool. The nasty boys. Wasn't that like a, a song? <laughs> I think it was by Apollonia. <laughs> oh no, Paul Abdul. <laughs> wait, wait, I don't know, who knows? I I don't really follow pop music that much. Oh man, it's a nice page. I love long panels like this. These tall panels, narrow. That's really, really cool. So this has got kind of a Mobius vibe with the colors. And it's swirly whirly. That's cool. He was smart. Undercarriage of a car? Nope. I ain't drawing it. <laughs> That's called smart storytelling. <laughs> Yeah, these guys, man, they can all draw these small figures so damn good. Oh, yeah. Roar! There's a lot of roaring. Wow, he's getting knocked out of, out of the page. That's cool. Great gesture. This is nice, too. This is cool. Running, running, running. Man, he's going to chuck that car. Okay. That's a pretty cool face. I get the impression, like, he would just sketch stuff out, and if it was good enough, then it would get inked, you know? Like, I think this is probably, like, you know, the rough, and then he tightens it up just a bit and goes with it, which is cool. I mean, it's, it's you know... <laughs> the figure's pretty cool. Chunky. is nice he draws him good that's nice too love that character he's pretty handsome right there he's like come on come with me oh, that's cool that's funny rendering to me but it, it definitely does the job I don't know what else you could really do but it, it's like he 
crosshatched a building. That's an, it's what it is, is texturally speaking, I would picture this sort of line work on a different material, material meaning not cement. Cement to me has a different texture that wouldn't be hatched like that, but that's my own language, uh, you know. I try to mix it up. I've talked about this before. I can hit on it for a second, but like if I if if Superman and Batman are on a page, I actually render their costumes differently. I use different tools on Superman's like um, pajamas <laughs> costume. Sorry, um, than I do on Batman's pajamas. I mean costume. <laughs> so. Uh, Superman I might use more brush and then on Batman I might use more quill and I'll make like Batman more angular with my lines and then Superman but it's just something that I've, I've done myself um, it wasn't anything I was taught because uh, I'm self-taught but uh, it just seemed to make sense to me so like uh, when Finch and I we did we had uh, in Batman Dark Knight Superman showed up and you know I would intentionally kind of ink them differently but uh then I wouldn't use those same, my point is I wouldn't use those same techniques on inanimate objects that have, when I say materials, it's kind of a, a digital art sort of thing. Um, like materials just mean like any, um, not necessarily clothes, but like wood is a material, metal is a material, rock is a material. Um, so I try to handle them all differently. This is great. This is nice too. He has a lot of fun drawing this dude, I think. You get that impression. Us is nice page. I saw it when the when the page is open. I really liked it. That's great. A really nicely laid out too. This page just screams composition. You can just do so much fun stuff with something like this, and he really had fun with it. He does a little bit of like an X thing with some of his layouts. Like he'll sweep you this way and sweep you this way. It's an interesting approach. I like it. I'm pretty sure we're kind of getting towards the end. So anyway, everyone stay safe out there. Don't get lazy. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you're protecting your health. We want everyone around for 2021 kicking ass on their art, watching YouTube, buying Blaster Kid. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. I'm actually looking forward to when the YouTube channel switches to more of that. It'll be really fun. I think people will get excited about it. You'll get sick of hearing about it and seeing it, but I, I had to have the secrets intact first. So that's why I haven't been showing stuff is I wanted it to be a surprise. That's the fun of it. <laughs> this is such a great cover. I think I have like four or five copies of this comic. I have so many copies of this. So I'll milk them. Oh, maybe there's one more issue. I'll do it. And then I gotta get to work. We'll move fast through some of the more um, simple pages. This is nice. I always like these kind of shots too. The like the lighting from below with the shadows. It's nice. Oh, that's cool. Again, the upshot. Those are hard to do. Yes, yeah, so I think we'll do Aphrodite 9 this afternoon. And then, uh, I don't know what we'll do tomorrow. Recommendations, por favor. And I do, if, if I'm not familiar with an artist that people recommend, I always do Google it. So don't be shy if you have someone that's way off the beaten path or someone that you think that I might not know. Because trust me, as much as, as many artists as I know, there's always someone out there that you have never seen their work. Or maybe you've seen it and didn't know the name. That's possible. There's still a few people that I'm like, man, I got to remember. There was someone that was on Instagram. Maybe you guys can help me with this. So there was a person on Instagram like a year ago that would do these um, short video clips of them drawing. And they would go in, I want to say on like colored paper. And they would, they would get real, they would start real dark. And they would keep building it up with like white and paint and stuff like that. And they would do these kick-ass like finished pieces and they used to upload them all the time 
and I've not seen that person post anything in a while, but they had a pretty di distinct style. It wasn't necessarily comic book art, but, um, you know, they would do, uh, I mean, I can't even remember somewhere. I'm sure I've saved pieces that they did or the video clips, but, um, yeah, that's one artist that I'm like, where the fuck did that person go? So their shit was cool, but yeah, they would do a one minute clip and, and do a speed, I mean, they weren't draw, literally drawing it in one minute, but yeah, it was real messy and they would, they would just keep putting lighter and lighter values of paint on it and, um, like spray stuff and scratch stuff. And then the piece would be done and you'd be like, damn dude, how'd you figure that out? It was amazing. Let me know who it was. Someone will know out there. It was about a year or maybe a year and a half ago. Not a comic book artist. They, they're like more just their own thing. As far as I know, I don't I don't remember them having anything to do with comics. But yeah, they would take like the white paint or like lighter colors at the end, and all of a sudden it would just be this like kick ass finished piece. It was very cool. So old school, the lighting on that. I've seen so many comics where they do this. <laughs> I think what, what makes it stand out is it's like the black with just these lines. It doesn't really fade. Um you know, you've got a little bit of feathering there, but yeah, it's, just, it's a funny look to me. This is cool. So I wonder, did he add zip, or is this like a color thing? <laughs> Flava Flav. You got kicked out of the band. This is, this is Chuck D? And it's uh, whatever that dude's name was. I want to say Kid in Play, but I don't know if that's right. What was that dude's name? That's cool. Okay, we're going to wrap it up here, even if there's more, because i got to get to work. My Kaiser letter. I know that guy. Oh, and Glennis Oliver. She's a good colorist. I think it's a woman. Uh, damn you, Larry. There's more. All right, we'll go fast. Oh, wait, is this it? We'll go quick. That's nice. <laughs> Man, this is a lot of pages. Yeah, you can get these comics pretty cheap. All right, we're going to hustle... That's nice. Actually, like that. Her head is very big. These two. Especially because they're behind them. What is that? That's weird. That's cool. Kind of has a, like a Jay Lee not inking himself vibe. There was a few issues of uh, Namor where Jay didn't ink himself. And it might have been Al Milgram actually inking him. And it looked a little more like this. It didn't have all the sort of vibe that a Jay Lee page has. That's nice. Like that. Although this light, it's supposed to be her upper eyelid. But it makes it look like the eye, the way the colorists color it. That's so annoying when that shit happens. So yeah, the colorist misread this. This is should be flesh color. To me, that's her upper eyelid. That's not the eyeball. And that's why the eye, do you see how it's sitting up? Incorrect coloring, Glennis. How dare you? <laughs> so why colorists have to be artists. You can't just learn these generic things and think you're a colorist. It's not where it ends. In fact, you're just annoying the penciler because they spot that stuff in two seconds. And that's a common thing. I've, I used to get that a lot where you would draw like an eye like this and they would like this as the eye. And you're like, do you not know what the fuck is going on? It's the upper lid. That's not, his eye isn't open. Get this shit straight. <laughs> you can see it ramps me up immediately. But coloring is like a fun thing that's easy to learn, e easy to get into, I should say. And then people think they're colorists. It's like, no. <laughs> Every position in comics, besides writing, although even writers, inkers and colorists, you have to learn to draw. You don't understand form and you don't understand lighting you're not a fully realized artist period but when i started you know i didn't know, i didn't know all that stuff either so i'll give everyone a pass for a couple of years but you you need to start to develop it, especially if you're working as a pro very very important or you won't remain a pro long <laughs> 
people will be like, that was fun working with you. It's like, do you want to do something else? They're like, mm, no. It's cool. All right, this is for sure the end. We're stopping here. That's cool. It's got a little Vabacolo vibe. Chris would do crazy faces like this. Okay, all right, we're gonna end it here. All right, hopefully that was fun. Someone interesting, somewhat controversial. That's what people like, right? Controversy. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Be safe out there, and I will talk to you all later. Bye. There was more pages. <laughs> all right, later.